Alrighty, hello. We're going to uh, start this lesson off. Uh, we're going to be starting math, so we're going to be going over fractions. Working with fractions with unlike denominators. Do a little bit of comparing, a little bit of adding, subtracting, uh, do some things like that. So to start off with, uh, who's familiar with what a fraction is? A uh, fraction is typically written as a number over another separated by a line, x and y just representing any number to be there. So for instance, a typical one we see is 1 over 2 or 1 half. Uh, so if I had one pizza, a whole pizza, this represents a whole pizza, the circle. So if I was to give uh, Timmy over there half a pizza, we would cut it down the middle. Not very centered, but you get the idea. Uh, that represents one half, and that represents one half. And if you take those and add them together, which when you add fractions, you add across the top, and so we would go one plus one equals two, and denominator stays the same, and we would have 2 over 2, which would also simplify to 1, one whole. So, looking, uh, making this a little more complex, what if we had wanted to give one half to Timmy, and then Susie only wanted a quarter of the pizza? So then, we have to figure, okay, what am I going to give away if I give Timmy one half of a pizza and then I give Susie one quarter or one over four of a whole pizza? Well, we can't add these together because they have unlike denominators. So we've got to first find common denominators in that and go from there because Another part of this lesson going in is if we have 1 over 2 and 1 fourth, which of those is greater? Uh, typically, a student or young student would look at this and go, well, this one has the bigger number in it, so that must be the bigger portion, when in actuality, that's not the case. And so... If we were to fill this in, we'd be, I would say, okay, a half is actually bigger, <coughs> excuse me, is bigger than one-fourth and one-fourth. So then we would put an arrow in there, and the open end wants to go to the bigger number. And the way I was taught, that's an alligator, and it wants to eat the larger portion. So, we're going to read a book and learn about fractions and how to compare them, how to do some adding and subtracting, and we're going to go from there. So, the book we're going to be reading is A Fraction's Goal, Parts of a Whole. Be a little short. Uh, so, to the first page, fractions are a portion. A piece, or just a part, of something that is larger, like the segment on a chart. Or look at this round pizza. It can be cut in two, or four, or six, or eight or more. Whatever best sit suits you. And, kind of like ours up here, you could take this whole pizza and cut it into however many slices you want. But, then you go through and you find how many parts are there to the whole. But let's say that's cut in two, and you pick up one slice. If you've got one piece out of two, it's one half to be precise. Next, cut that pizza in four and take a single piece. That's one quarter. New. Now, can you see how the size has been decreased? So now, if someone wants one half, two slices will be needed. Two and four and one half are the same. 
their different ways to read it. So, going back to our original examples, if we have one half of a pizza, and then say someone said, oh well, this pizza's already cut into four sections, if they said, well, I want two of the four, those are equal to each other. They represent the same amount. Fractions also work with groups, like two-thirds of the players, seven-eighths of the jugglers, and one-half of the mayors. Pretend you have three uncles and two came for a visit. That would mean two-thirds were there. That's not so hard now, is it? Let's say third one then showed up to join in all the fun. That's one whole group of uncles, because three over three equals one. That's like what I was saying up here. One half of a pizza and another one half of a pizza. One half plus one half will equal two over two, and we get a whole one. Same case here. Two thirds of her uncle showed up, and then the third, the one third that wasn't there finally showed up, and then they had three out of three, so all of her uncles were there. So a whole group. Fractions come in handy if you ever help with baking. You'll see them in recipes for breads and cakes you're making. Three quarters tablespoon of salt, add two thirds cup of flour, five eighths cup of chocolate chips, and bake for one half hour. Yeah, cooking, uh, you'll see a lot of fractions and different units being used there, and very much you'll see two thirds cup of flour, add salt, uh, half a teaspoon or whatever. So if any of you have interest in cooking or have been uh, cooking or have a hobby in it, you probably are familiar with seeing these sorts of numbers or fractions when you've been helping or doing a little bit of cooking at home. Uh, the numerator is the word for the t number that's on top. Like the three that's in, we lost three tenths of this year's crop. And that's something I didn't touch on earlier is if we have any fraction, doesn't matter what number's up top, your top number is always your numerator. Going to run out of room here. So then from here, I imagine we're going to figure out what that bottom number is called. The number that's underneath the slash is the denominator. Note that nearly all the time, the bottom number is greater. So, and Typically, always, this bottom number will be bigger than your top number. That'll always be how your fractions are. Numerator on top, denominator on bottom. Fractions can be, excuse me, fractions can be used in pizzas, planes, and cranes, and plants. You'll know more than just a portion if you give them half a chance. So what is a fraction? Do you know? And here we can see one half, one third, three over three, one quarter, two over four, three quarter, five eighths, seven eighths, three tenths, one twelfth. It can go on and on, however many, or the kind of fraction you can have can be endless. Uh, typically, you go from one half, one quarter, uh, one eighth, and usually it doubles past there, so it, in multiples of doubling that bottom number. So from one eighth, go one sixteenth, then one thirty second, one sixty fourth, one and one hundred twenty eighth. Uh, but at that point, the amount is so insignificant, it represents such a small amount of a whole, one out of 128. If we tried to cut a pizza into 128 slices, there'd be nothing. You'd get a sliver, and I don't think anybody here wants that. So typically, you'll work with numbers maybe up to 12 or something like that, but the application or the scenario is going to depend on what kind of fraction you'll be working with. So, and that was the end of that book.
And so then we will go to where our assignment will be. And it's in here. And we will go to this page, page 12. This is going to be the assignment. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to follow the instructions on this page and construct your own. We have the supplies, the cardboard bases, the shoebox tops, uh, the paper towel tube for in the center. Uh, so the big part of this assignment is reading the instructions and you following the instructions accurately to as they're described to you. And you're going to create a model scale something like this and here I have tiny balsa wood sticks they're pretty light but divided them or made them into different parts of a fraction color coded them have two halves and sixth a third you can see that no, the light's not very good. And then fourths. If we were to stack all of these end to end, they would be the same length as the original piece. And what you'll do once you have this constructed is you can uh, get your worksheet and you'll see the what you need to compare. So if I wanted to compare one sixth of one of a hole, you'll throw it in one and then it in the other and see the comparison. It's they're pretty light, but it shows a slight angle to the side with one half, and it'll help you compare unlike fractions and go from there. But the important part of this is reading the instructions, uh following those and building it to specifications to the instructions given from this book uh, and then filling out the worksheet where you'll compare and do some adding of fractions. So if there's any questions come up to me. Uh, this requires a hot glue gun. If you're not comfortable with it uh, come up to me and I'll assist you and don't be messing around with it. At we can't handle it we're not going to do fun projects like this because we're obviously not responsible enough or mature enough to be able to handle a hot glue gun or anything like that so let's be respectful of property other people's things and uh, be mindful of that so uh, you can go ahead and grab your supplies and get started